Hello everyone, this is Angela here and today I want to continue on with my online um, series how to spot someone with a personality disorder or someone who's just plain toxic um, whether they have a full-blown personality disorder or just issues that you know you get involved with these type of people and you don't really see you don't really pay attention sorry you don't really pay attention to the red flags that are waving in front of you because you're either you know caught in the stardust of lust or for other reasons um, you just don't really see what's going on until it's too late and that's why I want to do this video series because the most complicated thing in life, one of the most complicated things in life is um, romantic relationships. Um, I haven't met anybody from the online dating site. It's because I kind of really don't want to. I joined this thing on the spur of the moment, but realized that I'm really not ready. I just, you know, want to take some time out to um, heal from my last relationship and to just basically socialize and it seems like all these people are looking for relationships or whatever and you know I've run into some people that you know talked to a few people online and it just kind of made me run the other way um, okay but in this video I want to talk about how to spot somebody whether you meet them online or you meet them in person how to spot somebody that you should basically stay away from and this type of person is my last relationship with my ex okay now I'm not here to slander him or anybody else but I just want to talk about some things that I did not pay attention to and I should have and if I had I would not have gotten involved with him you know in life every relationship is either a lesson or a blessing and I'm turning this negative into a positive and taking the experience with me as a life lesson and I'm hoping that my life lesson will help somebody else so that they don't have to learn this lesson the hard way so this particular type of individual is what I would call a bonehead or somebody that I would call reckless and this is what happened um, Back in 2013, it was the summer of 2013, and I was heavily into studying Italian. Um, I'm beginning to read Italian quite well. I can't really speak it that well, but I can understand it. I can definitely read the language and understand. And um, I was involved in something called conversation exchange, and I was talking to a few Italians overseas, and got involved in some drama online and you know I kind of quashed that I don't want to get into that um, and I started hanging out in South Philly at this little uh, Italian coffee shop because I wanted to see if there would be somebody that would converse with me and I meet this guy and he's very good looking and very charming and he was really sweet and he just it just clicked and took me out to lunch and um, you know everything was great you know um, that summer we did a lot of things you know um, I was living I was renting a house sharing it with someone else and um, so I had a roommate and the landlord was really nice it was it was a great environment at the time but the landlord had problems with the other tenant and to make a long story short that ended in September of 2013 so all summer I had courted my boyfriend and he was living in a house um, that wasn't his it was um, rented as well but it was only a temporary place that he was staying um, and I remember when I went over to his place, you know, because he would invite me over. He would come to my place. I would go to his place. He lived in the neighborhood. And I was 
I would be sitting there in the kitchen and um, I noticed his mail and there was a lot of mail that said past due you know it would be laying it out on the counter it's not like I was snooping and I just happened to see that his bills were all past due and you know he owed traffic tickets and you know he had creditors up his butt the IRS was up his butt because he had a 1099 he was back in his taxes and stuff he was paying it but he had to pay with fines and penalties because he had no choice and um, you know he tells me a sob story you know about how different things in his life and his marriage and all that stuff and you know I'm you know feeling very sympathetic and compassionate and um, I really you know was was very um, physically attracted to him and it, it, it was I just wasn't thinking straight and this could happen to anyone um I would not so when my lease ended in September of 2013 I ended up moving in with him even though I really didn't want to I wasn't ready at that point but he was struggling and I figured that we could help each other out the relationship was perfect blah 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 and so I ended up together with him and um I didn't realize that there was a reason why everything why his creditors were after him and all this other stuff it's because he uh, did not know how to manage his money he was quite reckless and um, during our whole relationship you know when when we we left that place and then moved into another place together and because that place was temporary for him it was actually a, a owned by the house was a rental owned by a friend of his and he didn't not want to rent the house out to him he basically wanted to uh, do other things anyway so I ended up renting this apartment with him and I had to constantly be on his back about giving me the rent money and it was like totally on my shoulders to make sure that everything got paid because everything was in my name everything the apartment um the apartment was in both our names but all utilities were in my name the cable bill everything because he couldn't have anything in his name um this type of person okay did not have any money to take me out to really court me to do the things that I wanted to do and I know it's really stupid in the beginning yes but I got too involved too fast due to circumstances that you know were unfortunate like I told you like I'm like I said that my landlord terminated at least because of my roommate at the time and you know I found myself in this situation I found out that I want you know I was trying to help somebody else out and you know I thought everything's gravy well it wasn't gravy okay it wasn't the relation he ended up being we ended up being very poor opposites when it came to finance and managing money um, I was the type of person that constantly worried about bills being paid and making sure that they got paid on time because my good credit is very valuable to me you know what I'm saying it's something that I treasure and I protect immensely and he doesn't care it's like he you know he he doesn't care. he had the attitude I don't care if the house falls on top of me tomorrow live for today life is too short and then other situations came up too like for example I started realizing that I'm getting older and um, I wanted to make sure that I had life insurance policy so I went out and got a policy and um, you know for the obvious reasons and I did not name him as beneficiary because he's not my husband he wasn't my husband so I did not do that um, 
So I tried to talk to him and say, listen, you know, maybe you should think about either getting a prepaid funeral or getting a life insurance policy, making your daughter a beneficiary, because what are you going to do if you die? You can't wake up a corpse and say to a corpse, hey, what do you want to do with your body? And he was furious and flipping out on me saying, you know, I don't want to talk anything more about this. It's like he just, I just felt more like his mother than like his girlfriend. And because I was, I felt like I was dealing with a child, somebody that had the attitude, why should I worry when somebody else will do it for me? So what I'm trying to say is, even though this person didn't have a personality disorder, and believe me, it doesn't take somebody with a personality disorder to be toxic, you have to pay attention to um, the circumstances that surround somebody. Don't think that just because somebody has a beautiful home and is driving a Mercedes, which that wasn't the case in my situation, but don't think that that person could have money. You know what I'm saying? They could be living paycheck to paycheck and that could all be a facade. You know what I mean? And they're really broke or deep in debt and about to lose all that stuff. Um, another mistake that I made was that I loaned him money. I found myself in a catch-22 position where this, where my ex was constantly changing jobs, okay? And to his credit, he, he worked the entire time and he did provide the money for the rent. But he never provided anything else. And it got to the point when we were living together, we stopped going out because there was no place to go. There was no money to go anywhere. And I certainly wasn't going to pay for it. You know, there were times, a lot of times, like he didn't even have money to pay for a, a meal at the diner. I was constantly dipping into my pocket. And then I had loaned him money to buy a car because I found myself in a catch-22 position that if I didn't loan him money to get a vehicle so that he could work, then I was going to have to be responsible for 100% of the rent. And I was, uh, so I loaned him the money. I got most of it back since we broke up. But I found out that, um, you know, he ended up cheating on me anyway. He ended up going out and doing what he was going to do anyway. And the point is these people do not change, okay? These people, um, these reckless people that have that dynamic in their personality where they're irresponsible and reckless with their finances do not change. So if you don't want to be fitting the bill, my suggestion to you if you happen to notice, look around real carefully when you're at this person's house. If you happen to notice mail out in the open that says, pass due, pass due, pass due, pass due, okay, run the other way. Okay, everybody, that's it for this video. Thanks, and have a great day.